Hey guys, it's Chuck from Brady Adventures, and today... Next step for the front suspension is to do the torsion bars. Make sure you hold out to the end of this video, because at the end I will talk about settling of the torsion bars and exactly how I adjusted them uh, for my anticipated modifications moving forward. And if you like the video, make sure you give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment on uh, any questions you might have. And thanks a lot for checking us out. These videos are for entertainment purposes and to give you an idea of the things you might encounter when you're doing one of these jobs. If it's not something you're completely comfortable doing, hire a professional to do it for you or get someone to help. One of the first things you want to do before you get started on any of your suspension work is measure the distance between the center of your hub to your fender. I've got 19 inches. I want to go around and do all four wheels. Ideally, you're going to do your rear suspension first. You're going to get an idea of your increase in height, and then you're going to jack your front, figure out the kind of rake you want from the back to the front. Going around the front left uh, driver's side was 18 and three quarters from the center of the hub to the lip of the fender. Uh, the front right was 19. The rear left was 19 and an eighth, and the rear right was 19 and five eighths. Now to get the wheels off and get started. I gotta be honest with you, the whole torsion bar thing really screwed with me, and I understood the general concept, but didn't know how it worked exactly. And the whole time I was working on the driver's side was a learning experience, and once I got through that, kind of made a couple mistakes. Uh, the passenger side was much easier. There's a lot of good images and descriptions on I Hate Mud, so definitely go check that out. But I wanted to show you this little Lego model that I put together. Um, in the back of the vehicle is the, the anchor arm where the adjustment nut is. So just picture the adjustment nut going through this hole. You can turn it. If you crank down the adjustment nut, it rotates it in like this. And if you loosen it up, it comes out like that. This is the torsion bar, and up here it's connected to the torque arm. Um, so you have the anchor arm and the torque arm, and the torque arm is directly connected to the lower control arm. When the vehicle hits a bump, it is going to rotate the torsion bar like that, and the bar is gonna act like a spring. Um, when you go to adjust the adjustment nut, if you adjust it in like this, it's going to lower the wheel and if you adjust it out it's going to lower the vehicle and raise the wheel up when you're doing the preload take the instructions um, say to rotate five splines so you're going to actually rotate it like this so that way you have a little more room to tighten this down and raise the wheel up now the first side on the driver's side i actually did it in the wrong direction on the driver's side and i rotated on the rear of the torsion bar I did my five spline offset to the outside of the vehicle and rotated it up like that and then you have very little room to adjust it's really pretty simple and once you kind of go in there and take it apart one time it, you'll really uh, start to understand how it works let's get this 30 millimeter torsion bar adjustment bolt out and this is the one that screws people up and luckily mine look almost like they're brand new so i think we're gonna be in pretty good shape and getting these out all right got my 30 millimeter socket here and i'm gonna get it started with this breaker bar and see oh man super easy surprisingly enough that turned so easy i'm just gonna use this ratchet yeah it's a little tighter but not everyone has it this easy. If you have trouble, spray it down with some PB Blaster, give it some time, and try again. All right, now we're gonna get these two guys off, and they are 22 millimeters. And these guys have some extreme torque on them. I think these are 167. So. There we go. There's one. There we go. All right, so it's pretty nice. I'll get a little more use out of this uh, 22 millimeter ratcheting guy here. to do is 
move that guy this way. And I'm just beating this torsion bar bracket back up onto the torsion bar itself until it'll clear the bolt. That should be plenty. All right. Now I've got to get this off the torsion bar. I might need to hammer that with a, a drift as well. Right, there we go. Nice. There we go. bars in. The first thing we have to do is mark the master spine. You can see that one's already marked, so that's nice. You can see the mark, and that's where there's an absent tooth in there. This one is not marked, but you can see right here is where there's a tooth missing, so I'm going to mark that. All right, so that's marked. Okay, they say mark one spline, any spline. So that guy's marked. And now, we're gonna use our straight edge. I'm transferring the mark from the spline on one end to the other, then marking a five spline offset to preload the bar. My first mistake was marking the offset in the wrong direction. It's a little bit hard. That's why I understand why they wanna use angle iron. Um, I'm just gonna put a little dot here. So I'm going to advance five splines. One, two, three, four, five. So now I'm going to line my marks that I made up with the torsion bar. So I'm going to put this on right here. So there's the mark for that guy. And I'm going to get him lined up. One thing I didn't do is I wanted to put a little grease this because I heard it's a smart thing to do. My second mistake was putting the bracket and the arm on the bar before the bar was in the truck. There's a little bit of grease on the torsion bars to begin with but I think people do this just to keep corrosion from happening and it does corrode a little bit in there and also make it so they're easier to get out. Now pretty sure I'm ready to go put this stuff back in. I was trying to do this solo but quickly realized an extra set of hands was necessary to get the torsion bar back up in the vehicle and the brackets on. Hey man, I could use a hand if you got a sec. Make sure the anchor arm slots are seated in the bracket. I got this finger tight, marked the splines in the wrong direction the first time, but we went the other way and everything fit up there pretty good and this looks about right. This bolt's just in a little ways and now we're going to tighten the front anchor arm bolts and then get around and do the other side and uh, we'll actually adjust the torsion bars. So that'll be the last thing that we do. Tighten these anchor arm bolts to 167 foot pounds. See the the new one, it's silver over there, and this is the old one. So we're gonna get this one out of the passenger side. Um, first thing to do is get this 30 millimeter bolt. And, oh, cool. So this is the one that gives people a lot of trouble. If it's pretty rusted up, looks like this one's gonna come out too. So this one looked a little bit more corroded, but. So like we did on the driver's side, take out the adjustment bolt and then loosen the nuts on the torque arm. Once the torsion bar is out of the vehicle, you need to remove the bracket and that can be a real pain. Now you can mark your splines and the five spline offset for the preload.
thing, and this bar is very heavy. Yeah. So you're gonna be holding the bar up, kind of positioning it, while I'm trying to get this in on over here. Okay. Here. Okay. Right now, this this bar is too far this way, and I couldn't get this up in there and in it. So you okay. have to slide it. You have to kind of position it, and then get this on, and then move it back. Okay. And then once you move it back, you're gonna get it over that bolt again. It takes a little finesse to get the anchor arm onto the torsion bar. Get the anchor arm seated and the adjustment bolt in position and then tighten everything up. Now it's time to adjust the torsion bar. Count the number of turns on the adjustment nut while the vehicle is in the air and then lower it to check your progress. Okay, I just did one full turn and I went from, let's see, 19. 19. Alright. Okay, I'm gonna do one more. Getting there. Dang. Two turns got me like a maybe a half of an inch. We're not getting very far here. Maybe 19 and three quarters. Took it on its uh, maiden voyage, just did a lap around the neighborhood, and I'm gonna recheck and see if the torsion bar is settled out. Apparently they do that over time, they'll settle a little bit. When I was initially cranking the torsion bars, um, when I let it off the jack, it would be about an inch above where it would ultimately settle at. A quick run around the neighborhood, hit a couple bumps, make sure that suspension's working. I'd come back measure and it's an inch lower than it was. So it took me three or four tries uh, of adjustments to get it exactly where I want it. So I was at 21 and a quarter. And now I'm at, oh wow, 20. So that settled out quite a bit. So I set the vehicle up to have one inch of rake. Um, I anticipate putting a bumper on the front soon, so that will probably increase the rake a little bit. I think that will be the perfect amount of rake um, to keep it from squatting too bad when I load it up with gear in the rear. And if you like the video, make sure you give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment on uh, any questions you might have. And thanks a lot for checking us out. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. And always feel free to leave us any comments or questions that you might have.